Welcome to my channel on the best of fantasy. Well, I have dried my eyes and sighed my sighs, so it's time to share my thoughts on Fitz and the Fool, the trilogy that ends the entirety of the Realm of the Elderlings by Robin Hobb. This uh, will be a spoiler-free video, however, I will be in some spoiler-filled discussions later on. I have one scheduled with Derry from Derry's Reddit before, and I am very likely to be talking with Mike and perhaps others uh, over at Mike's Book Reviews. So there will be some spoiler-filled discussions for those of you who have read this uh, extraordinary trilogy. But for those of you who have not, or even those who have but still want to hear what I have to say in a spoiler-free way, here we go. What an extraordinary end to an extraordinary series. I absolutely adore this entire series. Uh, it's very difficult for me to find the right words to express this experience, but it is one of the most fulfilling and sublime literary journeys I have ever been on. And I, you know, I don't think that rankings really matter a ton, uh, whether we're talking about ranking the individual trilogies or series within Realm of the Elderlings and that sort of thing. But I will say that in terms of uh, my ranking within the Realm of the Elderlings, if we have to talk about that sort of thing, uh, for me, the execution in Live Ship Traders and in the Tawny Man trilogy uh, is absolutely the peak of Robin Hobb and in the series as a whole. Uh, in terms of the emotional impact, I don't think anything quite beats Tawny Man for me. Uh, but that said, I absolutely loved this ending to The Realm of the Elderlings. It's just so much, uh, so much emotion. Uh, this is, without doubt, one of the most emotional journeys that any reader can go on. And I will say that it is among my very favorite series uh, for that reason, but also because of the thematic depth that Robin Hobb succeeds in instilling in this incredible series. Uh, just love everything about it. So I do have a little few kind of nitpicky things in terms of the execution of the Fitz and the Fool trilogy. Uh, I love the overall ambition of it. Uh, I love how Robin Hobb brings all the various sub-series together, in a sense, uh, without saying anything uh, in a spoiler-filled way. This is a really wonderful thing uh, and very fulfilling uh, in terms of bringing all of these different series together from Realm of the Elderlings. Uh, and it's much more than just the, the cameos that we had in some of the earlier series. Uh, such as in Tawny Man, where there were little cameos from characters from Live Ship Traders and that sort of thing. This is a much deeper level of integration of the series, and you can tell that Robin Hobb was really trying to <clears throat> bring everything together in Fits and the Fool, and I think largely succeeded. Uh, it's just wonderful, very emotionally satisfying, fulfilling to have uh, these characters be meaningful parts of the story in Fits and the Fool. Uh, but there were times when I felt like it was just such a task, such a vast task to bring these various sub-series together that it did get a little bit messy here and there. And I do think that perhaps I don't know this uh, because I haven't uh, done my homework and, and, and looked up to see if Robin Hobb is a, a, a planner or a pantser or an architect or a, a gardener, as it were. But I strongly suspect that she is more on the gardener side when it comes to writing. And there were times I felt in Fits and the Fool where I could see her uh, almost spontaneously trying to figure out how to bring things together, how to bring certain plot elements in that would were emotionally satisfying, maybe not entirely compelling in some ways. But overall, look, these are little nitpicks, and, and uh, I felt that it, it worked for the most part. And in fact, really, the, the first book, Fool's Assassin, for me, uh, was... Uh, perfectly executed. And in, and if the uh, the subsequent books, uh, Fool's Quest and Assassin's Fate had been as neat uh, as as uh, as well executed as Fool's Assassin, I think this would have become my favorite in the realm of the Elderlings and quite possibly even overtaken my my very favorites that have been 
you know, for uh, quite a few years, for about three quarters of my life, Lord of the Rings has been my favorite uh, series of all time. And only in recent years has the Malazan Book of the Fallen overtaken it. And I have to say, Realm of the Elderlings is in that conversation. It is emotionally just as tremendous, just as sublime as Lord of the Rings and the Malazan Book of the Fallen for me. Uh, and it, it is also, in terms of the incorporation of theme, just brilliant. So I, I love this. This is I, I cannot shout enough about how incredible and wonderful this series as a whole is, uh, but also fits in The Fool, uh, which is, for me, a slightly flawed but beautiful, beautiful story. And I am so glad that I read this. Uh, it is just excellent stuff. And the ending, oh my goodness, <laughs> the ending so devastating, so beautiful, so sublime, and so fitting. Now let's talk about some of the themes that I love in here. I think that they are woven in seamlessly. They're an important part of the story, and in moments they drive the story, and the story really centers around some of these very important themes that I think that Robin Hobb has done as well as anyone can, beginning with our connection to those around us. And when I say those around us, I include people, but also the other creatures of this world that we share. This sense of connection is something that pervades the entirety of Realm of the Elderlings, but it really comes to a crescendo in Fitz and the Fool, especially through the magic or the various types of magic that you have here. I don't think it's a spoiler to mention the wit and the skill. And there are even other minor types of magic in here, but those are the primary ones. And it, through these forms of magic, we really do see how there is a sense of interconnectedness in, throughout all of life that pervades everything. And what we do matters. What you do has an impact uh, and influences the people and the creatures around you. Uh, we leave a legacy with our actions and we become as well part of the greater world. What we do has repercussions and we become part of the greater world and we can feel that when we live in the now and we have our awareness in the present. Another great theme that Robin Hobb does as brilliantly as anyone can, in my opinion, is parenthood. Uh, just beautifully, there are all kinds of configurations throughout Realm of the Elderlings and in terms of parents and children and what those relationships mean. And man, that was a really compelling part of the Fits and the Fool trilogy for me. Uh, just hit me very personally and very deeply, and I loved it. And you also have friendship in there. You have marriage. You have vengeance and power and love. Uh, and you just you emerge, uh, having examined all of these themes through such a beautiful story with an abiding love for the story and the characters, especially the characters. Uh, and this is the thing that people rave about when it comes to Robin Hobb and her writing. It's all about the characters and the relationships between the characters. You know, don't come to Realm of the Elderlings for an action-packed, fast-paced read. That's not what this is. Um, it's about the characters. So uh, without getting into any details, because I'm avoiding spoilers here, I will say that there were old characters that I just loved being around, but there were a couple new characters in here that really stole the show for me. And if you've read Fits and the Fool, you almost certainly know who I am referring to. And it really is about the relationships between these characters, uh, just how beautifully done this is. And these are human relationships. There are ups and downs. There are times of beauty and there are times of friction. There are times of love and hate and everything in between. It's just so human and so compelling and real. These characters feel like your friends, and they feel like the, the, the things that happen with, between you and your friends, that you, especially the ones you've known for a long, long time. You, know, uh, you, you build up a history, and you have moments when you're at each other's throat, and you have moments uh, when you are incredibly fond of each other. And Hob captures everything. She captures it all. And I just love that. Uh, it, it is, uh, again, this is a relationship-focused series, uh, and that is certainly true. Uh, you have the, the slow burn beginnings to each of the books uh, with the really wonderful, compelling endings where everything comes together in such a wonderful way. 
Uh, but again, it's not for the action hungry so much. Uh, you know, the uh, the violence and everything. It, the thing about Hobbes' violence and action really is that it, they feel real. I feel like this is how violence actually happens for the most part in the real world. That they are sudden incidents, and it's it's almost like they sometimes come out of nowhere. And Hobbes does capture that uh, really well. But I think what she does brilliantly and what she's probably most interested in is what leads to the violence and what are the repercussions of the violence. And like no one else, she traces these repercussions. You have the repercussions to acts that happened in the beginning, in, in the Farseer trilogy, in Lives of Traitors, and the repercussions of acts that happened there upon the characters and the impact that it had on them. These are things that are still unfolding even in Fits and the Fool in, in such a beautiful and convincing and haunting way. Uh, and that is just, I, I absolutely am in, in awe of Hobbes' ability to trace a character's journey that way and give us a full sense of a life lived among friends and enemies and everything in between. It's just tremendous stuff. Uh, you can hear me raving here uh, about how wonderful this is, and I can't even put the right words to it, but uh, I do feel a, a, a very deep sense of connection to these characters, uh, and, and I'm very sad <clears throat> to be leaving them. I know there are some short stories that I believe I can go and read, and, and I've heard rumors that perhaps Robin Hobb might be working on something else within this world, so if she publishes anything else, I will run out and buy it and read it right away, I, I assure you. Uh, but yeah, in terms of uh, recommending this, this is a no-brainer. If you're up for a beautiful incredible journey where the payoff is more than equal to the effort you put in, uh, where yes, there are some slow starts to a lot of these books, uh, including in Fits and the Fool, uh, Assassin's Fate did take me a long time to feel like, okay, things are happening. That is typical. But what is also typical is the tremendous payoff that you get at the end of any Robin Hobb book that I have read, but especially this beautiful trilogy so I highly recommend it. <laughs> uh, go and read Realm of the Elder Rings if you haven't yet. Uh, it's just tremendous stuff. Uh, so those are my uh, somewhat jumbled thoughts, uh, but you can tell this had a, a big impact on me, I'm sure. Uh, so that's it from me for now. Until next time.